Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I'm going to be going over some things that you can do to get all of the games that you play to perform as optimally as possible. And if you're experiencing some issues where your game isn't performing up to how you think it should be, I'm going to show you some things that worked for me. So let's get right into it. So I mainly play Diablo 3 and Overwatch, and I've just built my PC within the last few months, and it's a very high-end PC, and I was getting drops to like 100 FPS on Overwatch with everything on low, and I was like, what's going on? You know, I'm, I'm talking to people, I'm having friends come over to look at my computer, I'm trying to figure it out, and I could not figure out what was going on, but I did finally figure it out. I'll have a clip pop up that I recorded from today while I was playing Overwatch, and even while I'm recording... And without everything on low, I'm sustaining over 200 FPS. And when I'm not recording, I stay close to 300 FPS like I should have been all along. So I did figure it out. There was three things that were mainly causing me problems. But I'll show you maybe a couple more things than that that you can do to help you out. So let's just get into the three things that were my problems. And hopefully that helps you. Okay, the first thing I want to go over is to try disabling HPET, which is high precision event timer and you have to look and maybe do a little bit of research on your motherboard some motherboards will have it in the bios where you can restart your computer go into the bios and disable this hpet setting but on mine i didn't have that option so what i had to do was you can just click on like your start menu type in device manager go to that and then under system devices right here scroll down until you find this right here high precision event timer right click on that and you can disable it mine says enable because it's already disabled but disable that and that got me a lot more fps when, when i did that that was the first thing i really noticed that helped me out and that fixed you know a, like 40 percent of my problem so try that out, see if that helps you get a little bit more performance out, and now let's hop into the second thing I noticed. Okay, the second thing I noticed that really helped me was download this program called CPUZ. I'll try to throw a link in the video description where you can easily find this, but this helps you kind of see what's going on with your computer and gives you all of your specs. And what I noticed under my memory was that this DRAM frequency was only at 1,000 instead of 1,500. So I have made it 50% faster by changing some things around. Now, what you want to do is look up what RAM you have. This is the RAM that I have right here, this Corsair Vengeance LPX, and I got 16 gigabytes of it, two sticks of eight apiece. And what you want to do is, in your specifications of your RAM, mine is DDR4-3000. Now, the DDR stands for double data rate, I think. So the CPU-Z is showing 1500, but it's actually double that because it's DDR. So it's performing at 3000 now, like it should have been all along, but mine was performing at 1000. So it was performing about 50% less than what it should have been. And when I, what I had to do with my RAM and my motherboard, I have an Asus motherboard, I had to go into my BIOS and change my XMP profile. That's what I had to do with my motherboard, but anyway, do some research with your setup and make sure you've got your RAM performing at the megahertz that it's supposed to be performing at. So that's one thing that you can check out that will definitely give you a big performance buff and did for me. So now let's get into the third thing I had to change. So the third thing I had to change, which which really put me over the top and got my PC performing how it should, was making sure my RAM is dual channel. When I opened this up, it said my channel was single. So, you know, I have two sticks of RAM and, you know, my PC supports dual channel RAM. So it's saying single is kind of hindering my performance a little bit. Now, what I had to do was go into my case and actually physically move the stick of RAM to a separate channel. And then it just automatically updated it and switched this to dual. Because uh, when I checked in my BIOS, I have four slots on my motherboard for RAM. And I had them both on channel A. 
So what I did was I just switched one over to channel B, and then when I loaded up my BIOS, it said that I had one stick in channel A and one stick in channel B. So when I loaded up CPU after a restart and turning on my PC, now it said dual. And that helped my performance a lot. So make sure your RAM is on dual instead of single. And now I'll get into a couple other general tips you can do to increase performance of your games. Make sure you have your PC's power plan set to high performance. I believe the default is on balanced, and switching it to high performance can get you just a little bit better performance in game. So what I like to do is just come down here and type in edit power plan like, the, like so, and then go over here to power options. And then I think the default is balanced and you just want to make sure it's set to high performance. You can also do it through the control panel. So you just come down here, control panel, and then find this thing right here, this power options. And that'll let you change that to high performance. Make sure and monitor your PC's temperatures. Uh, a good program that you can use to do this is CoreTemp, and it's a simple download. You can just Google download CoreTemp, but I'll also try to throw a link down in the description. But yeah, make sure you have CoreTemp, and these numbers will change while you are in-game. So make sure and check it out while you're actually in-game and see what these temperatures get to. And if you don't have time to look during the game, it keeps track of a minimum and a maximum right here. So you can actually look a little, you know, play for like an hour and then look and see what the minimum and the max were. Now, generally you want these to stay under 80 for the max. Now, normally your processor can handle up to like 90 or even a hundred, but ideally you want them as low as possible. You know, you want like when you're sitting here in windows, on the left here, these are your live temperatures. You wanna be in the 30s when you're just like sitting in Windows. And when you're gaming, you wanna be in like the 50s or 60s. Now, getting up into the 70s can be okay, but if you're in the 80s or 90s, that's a little bit too hot and you're gonna to wanna to find a way to get those temperatures down. So you can do that by you know not overclocking things or just getting better ventilation for your case or getting better cooling. But yeah, check your temperatures, make sure that they are under like 80 ideally and just keep an eye on that to make sure that's not causing any trouble for you. Understanding your monitor and how it interacts with your game FPS wise is important. You need to know if you have a 60 hertz monitor which is kind of like your standard average monitor nowadays is 60 hertz which means that you would want to be matching that and having at least 60 FPS at all times so that you're using the full you know refresh rate of your monitor. And if you have a 144 hertz monitor like I do, you want to make sure you're getting 144 FPS at all times, even when, you know, during like lots of things going on. You, If you can, you want your game to always be at least the same FPS as your monitor. And how you can access this is for me, you go to the right click, go to the NVIDIA control panel because I have an NVIDIA graphics card. And what you want to do is right here in this refresh rate. Now, even when I bought my 144 hertz monitor, the default was actually set to 60. So I had to go in and change this to 144 hertz. And you can notice the difference immediately. Like just moving your mouse on the desktop, it's like, whoa, it's so much more smooth. And if you do have a 60 hertz monitor, I would highly recommend your next uh, upgrade being 144 hertz monitor if you have a good enough PC to support 144 FPS in the game that you play because it's like almost triple as smooth. So definitely a big upgrade if you're looking for that next thing to get 144 hertz versus 60. But yeah, just make sure that you have in the control panel your monitor set to the proper refresh rate. MSI Afterburner is a program that you can download to get just a little bit more performance out of your video card. And they let you set up all kinds of different profiles and it shows the temperature right here that your video card is going at currently and you want this to be in the 60s or 70s now most video cards nowadays especially good ones can support up into the 80s but you do want to keep this low i would say under 70 ideally and you know for sure under 80 85 but mine generally runs about 65 to 70 while i'm gaming and you can set up different profiles on this program like Number one is my gaming profile. So you click the one, click the check mark, and then these are the adjustments I made. 
just to get a little bit more performance out of my video card but just a little program that you can try out if you want and then when you want to reset it you just click that and it resets everything back to normal before you did anything so definitely you know google your video card and do a little bit of research before doing something like this don't like fry out your video card by going crazy but it's definitely something to look into for you another thing i've noticed that can hurt performance just a little bit i can close this now um make sure that if you have a multiple monitor set up try and minimize your other monitors like if you're listening to youtube audio while you're gaming or something if you can try and minimize that and just listen to the audio because if you have multiple monitors rendering things actively it can hurt your performance a little bit so when i'm gaming i like to have my main monitor as the only thing that's like actively rendering things and have my other monitor on youtube or whatever minimized so that it's just showing my desktop and that can get you just a little bit better performance by keeping your other monitors minimized and not actively rendering things. Okay, that covers the things that helped me solve my issues that I couldn't figure out for months on why my PC was struggling. So hopefully one of those or multiple ones of those helped you out. If not, feel free to drop a comment and if I know anything that can help you I will definitely respond. And if you also have any tips that would be good to know, I would love to hear from you and learn those as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day. Peace.